Now this is a roof uh, on a property which is only about three years old, quite a big roof. Damage to the roof is around the sides in two places, but as you can see it's quite extensive. The decking underneath this feels like it's really gone, so there's only one thing to do. We're looking for clues here, we're trying to work out exactly what's going on. We're pretty sure it's not a roof leak. When we start picking this out and, and having a look, we can see it's really dry in most places, but is wet in a couple of places, especially up against this wall. We find once we rip this out, behind here was absolutely soaking wet, but it wasn't wet up against the wall. Now look at this. This is this is you know, just dripping with with water, um, and it's starting to look. We're getting we're getting clues here on what's going on. We we're looking all the time into the structure and around us, trying to find out why this is happening to this roof. I start looking at the coping stones, realize that the drip on the coping stones isn't particularly that good. In fact, it's not there at all. They just weren't the right coping stones. And the pointing on the coping stones is starting to deteriorate. So I take a coping stone off, look inside. What do I find inside? moisture everywhere sweating away inside this roof so now we know the build up of the roof we can go away and do a drawing and we can have a look at this in depth put the clues together and work out what's going on let me go through the different components for you so you understand what you're looking at. Obviously, I've taken the front wall away so that you can see into the construction of the roof. There's 8x2 joists supporting 100mm of insulation laid directly over the top of the 8x2 joists. Insulation over the top of that, which has got some timbers, which I'll show you in a second because they're underneath this, with furrings and with decking on the top and then obviously the um, roof cover the roof covering would go on that and all the water would run towards us as we're looking at it I've stripped it down so all I'm doing is showing you the uh, 100 mil insulation on, on the joists bear in mind this is a room underneath here and there's a ceiling that's missing so they've they've laid 100 mil of insulation which is foiled back on both sides directly on top of the joist and some manufacturers say that's fine to do I personally would never do that and there's two reasons why I wouldn't do it first of all the bounce which is always there if you do it I would always put a sub decking across the bottom plus also you need to put a vapor barrier down the vapor barrier should be going under the joists and it should be going up the sides without the sub decking there you can't put the vapor barrier down now on this particular roof we didn't find a vapour barrier even put down so they must have been assuming that the foil which is on the underside of this uh, was enough and adequate to stop any transfer of vapour through. Now on top of this they added 50 by 100 timbers laid across in this direction then on top of that they added more insulation in between now that's an interesting way of doing things to reach 150 mil of insulation and in a way because of the way they've bridged most of the joints they've actually probably got quite a good vapor resistance with all the insulation because of everything is staggered so in in some respects that works but they've still paid absolutely no attention to any movement of air that might come around from underneath here and up through all four sides and there lays a big problem so not only have you you don't know whether you've got a good vapor barrier but you also don't know if you've got air leakage around the outsides on top of that they laid furrings and these furrings are in this direction so that they're bringing the water down towards a box gutter that you built in here and then on top of that they put the decking the problem they've got here is that there's an air gap in between all of this. If moisture does get up around the edges or through any of this, it's then gonna get into the air gap which is under the decking which is there and there's no ventilation. Theoretically, this could have worked if they'd have put a vapor barrier in that went from here all the way down and all the way across and up the other side and then also put vents front and rear of all of this that way this top space 
would be a cold space and vented to the outside but internally you've got a warm roof and, and you've nearly got a warm roof with a cold roof on top of this actually if you did it that way but at the moment you've got an unvented space and my conclusion is is that that's why we've got areas of rot around the edges because of movement of air which is coming up around the edges now let's just have a look at the cavity wall scenario. You've got a cavity wall on the job which is uh, closed at the top and full of insulation and we know that outside along here the pointing is not particularly good. We also know that the coping stone which is on the top isn't throwing the water off either side so we've got water running down this side of the wall and we've got water running down this side of the wall. We also know that when we looked inside here we had a lovely lead flashing and under the lead flashing was dry so I'm not concerned so much of the water that was running down even though it's all going to have to be changed um, I don't think that was anything to do with the way the roof has rotted on the inside at the edges because it was bone dry on the wall but yet wet underneath the roof and all the way along however in this area being wet moisture could have been transferring through and certainly wouldn't have helped the situation on this particular roof what we're going to do we're going to change the coping stones we're also going to add vents wherever we can all over this roof and in some places we're going to put a a long vent across the walls because one long vent will do more of these cavities than putting mushroom vents in each one and will actually look better, be easier, uh, much better design. We're going to do as much as we can to vent the roof so that it doesn't sweat in the future. And that's as best we can do without stripping and going all the way back and putting a vapour barrier in all the way round. So we had to get the work finished in a day and get it waterproof. So now we're just putting our waterproofing system over the top of this until the next time we come back and put all the venting back in. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see how we finish it off and what we do with the venting. Now let's just sum up what actually we found here. We found three things wrong. No vapour barrier, no venting of the top cavity and the coping stone didn't have the correct drip detail on it. The coping stones were too small. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Speak soon.